You know, we have actually done a terrific job in the United States reducing drug abuse. It's down from 14% of the population past month to 7%. And if you expect somebody that controls that much money to be in favor of change, look again. Of course not, because money is power. Our problem isn't that we use too many drugs. Our problem is we've got too much money. Most people today cannot even tell you the name of our current drug czar who works under the Bush administration. We want to expand drug treatment courts that find people who are in trouble with the law because of their addiction and give them an opportunity to not just to uh, pay their debt to society, but to get clean and sober. Our viewpoint and our funding was to enhance prevention and education. And all of the drug czars since McCaffrey, or since Bill Bennett, who was the first one under these circumstances, they all do the same thing, they all talk the same way, they all give lip service to drug treatment, but when it comes down to it and the rubber meets the road, the only money that is spent is for incarceration. The reason why we don't hear about the drug czar, and by the way, the, the uh, drug czar is the son of General Vernon Walters, who was a great CIA hand during Iran-Contra, a great CIA player. John Walters is his name. We don't hear about it now because the drug business is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. The drug money is flowing, people are going to jail, the money's going through Wall Street, people are happy, it's not out of control and everybody's looking the other way. And that's exactly the way they need it to be because they cannot sustain not only the U.S. economy, but they cannot sustain the U.S. empire, the American empire, without those drug flows. Everybody is out to grab money. Everybody is trying to make money off the drug war on the good side. And of course, unbespoken on the bad side, the, the people that use drugs and sell drugs, they're trying to make money. The ruling class here in America had to come up with something so that they could control certain segments of society so that they could stay in power. So they created the drug war for the felonization of Americans. So the drug war has actually established a false capitalist economy there that's driven by the money you throw at it. The more money you throw at it, the wilder it gets. Back in the 70s, Joe Pietri was a large-scale marijuana and hashish smuggler working in Nepal. When Nixon started the drug war, he gave over $50 million to the government of Nepal to outlaw marijuana and hashish. Joe witnessed firsthand how a once peaceful Nepal quickly transformed into a society of heroin addicts controlled by a violent black market. I was in the marijuana and hashish business for 25 years. I spent 25 years of my life living in Southeast and Southwest Asia, where I saw the CIA through their political agendas allow the production of opium poppies and heroin production in, the, in Southwest and Southeast Asia that eventually reached these shores. Why do you think heroin use has gone up so much? Well, I don't think heroin use has gone up. Heroin uh, is increasing. I just stopped. Uh, you guys going to keep quiet or I have to go do this? Back on the streets of L.A., dealers use little balloons to sell small amounts of heroin. Sergeant Daigle points out balloons on the street that gets cleaned every few days. When I looked up, I realized I was standing on literally thousands of empty balloons as far as I could see. You can look on the ground and you, you can see uh, water, little uh, pure water that's given out. They're all little balloons. You'll see them all over there. They're as common as the cigarette butts. That's all heroin balloons. My wife and I had hired a young woman to help around the house. Soon I started finding burnt, bent spoons hidden in strange places. Jonna played in a punk band, and as I learned back in the 80s, music and drugs go hand in hand. Well, you know, you just think like, oh, uh, Iggy Pop, Kurt Cobain, you know, they use heroin, maybe I'll be able to write better songs, you know, I mean, Especially like, I think people who are into art and shit, there's more of a draw towards drugs just because you want to experience different states of, mind, of your mind, you know. I mean, right now it's about, it's easiest for me to get heroin is walking into a gas station and buying a pack of cigarettes, you know. The amount of heroin reaching U.S. shores seems to come in cycles. But nothing in past history can compare to the influx experienced in the wake of the new war on terror. It's very important for the American taxpayer to understand 
that Afghanistan was producing virtually no heroin under the Taliban and is now responsible for 80% of the heroin coming to the United States and the Western countries. Now, we invaded Afghanistan right after 9-11, secured the country in November just by coincidence. The planting season for the opium poppy is November, and you harvest in late May and early June. Former DEA agent Celerino Castillo served in the DEA, where he helped to eradicate vast poppy fields. When the Taliban was in, in Afghanistan, they were what they were, but they were definitely against opium crops cultivation, and a lot of it was destroyed. We secured the country just in time to release a whole bunch of opium warlords for prison. It was in the news. Well, drug money could soon be funding al-Qaeda and other terror groups. These beautiful looking flowers are fueling some ugly addiction and terrorism. When you've taught everybody how to make money with hard drugs, what are they supposed to do, stop? Police don't bother them. The U.S. military has other priorities. So within this past year that the U.S. government has controlled Afghanistan, why is there a major crop of heroin that's going to be coming into the U.S. or has come into the U.S.? We see a lot of people from Northern California, a lot of, you know, uh, you know, young male and female white couples, they actually come down here on vacation if they're heroin users because heroin is so, so readily uh, available down here in, in downtown L.A. But it's just so, uh, it's, it's inexpensive, it's good quality, it's, um, you know, it, it, it typically comes in from the harbor, right down in, in the harbor division, L LAPD. It's shipped in from overseas, comes in on, on, on cargo cargo ships, things like that. But uh, it's just, it's just readily available. You know? Afghanistan stands on the brink of becoming a narco-terror state. This drug money funds terror. It's a ploy. Ploy. You know, I support the truth, but I don't support my government because our government has lied to us. Those people at Homeland Security uh, were all brought in to, to fight the so-called war on drugs. When they realized that it failed, they went into terrorism, and, and now they're, they're trying to combine both of them by saying, uh, if you support uh, drug trafficking or you sell a dime back at a corner, that means you are now supporting terrorism, which is, which is another lie to the American people. The Patriot Act defends our liberty, is what it does, under the Constitution of the United States. Did I say that? We didn't need the Patriot Act to have prevented 9-11, and yet the Patriot Act was already uh, pretty much written before 9-11 even happened. It was uh, on the books within weeks, and normally that process takes months to draft that kind of legislation. You know, isn't it the ultimate irony uh, that perhaps the, the, the modern-day Al Capone, Osama bin Laden, uh, exists because of potentially the fact that he is a, a drug kingpin? It, do, don't people see this? People are never going to do away with the marketplace uh, for drugs, but that in fact it's prohibition that may have led to the actual bombing, uh, the actual destruction of the Twin Towers in New York. Bin Laden didn't blow up the Twin Towers because he just didn't like Americans. It was about money. Some type of way Bush got into making money and cut him off. We support 44 dictators. We support drugs. We support the president of Afghanistan, whose brother is the biggest drug lord in Afghanistan. We support the president of Pakistan, who is the one who profits. If you quit drugs, you join the fight against terror in America. When you have a government that uh, that promotes drugs to get their get their agendas across in Central America and South America, in Southeast Asia and Southwest Asia, and then puts its own people in jail for using them, are you really living in a free country? I've had two sitting congressmen tell me this. Jim, you're right. Most people in Washington realize that the war on drugs is not winnable, but it's eminently fundable. And people in government bureaucracy are addicted to the drug war funding.